Welcome, one and all, to the daily edition of, actually, to a Thursday night class. I'm surprised Amy is here because she's got to get up at 4:30 or something like that in the morning. <laughs> that, you know, that's funny because so am I. <laughs> that's the dab she laughs the loudest. <laughs> that's exactly just as fresh as Cassie. Are you on there, Cassie? They're talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let us turn to Luke 15, and, and uh, we could quite possibly, getting close to ending the Luke 15 section, <clears throat> but only the Lord knows for sure. All right, I'd like to read um, verse 20 and 21, just kind of to set up verse 22 and 23, which I want to focus on this first session, should we decide to go further on the second one. <clears throat> All of that depends on the Lord, too. All right, verse 20. This is Luke 15, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Okay, in verse 22 um, and 23 is where our focus is tonight. But the father said, the father said, and I'm not going to read the next three words because they're not important to what I want to say. The father said, bring forth the best robe, and a ring and shoes. Now, these are all things that you put on. These are not things that you put in. And if you're wanting, if you're wanting, um, you know, for lack of a better term, victory in your life, victory over your flesh, or victory over um, uh, the devil, or victory over the circumstances, there needs to be something within, not just something that you put on, not just something that is exterior to you. But there is that which God, as it were, puts on us. But verse 23 changes that. Verse 23, and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat. And this is the only thing that was put in him. This is what turned him from being a prodigal. This and the process to getting that feast prepared. This and that process. Uh, again, and just reminding you, part of that process is the beginning stages, seeing the son in the father's face. You know what I mean when I say that. You're looking and he's seeing something, but you're going, he's, that is, cannot possibly be me that he's seeing. He's seeing the son, but you're seeing the son in the father's face just as uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 when you look into his face, you see the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. And so, um, that, but that's the beginning process. That's the beginning process. Um, and then the other part of that is, well, it's, it's bring hither the sacrifice. Kill it. And then feast on the altar or the, the, the sacrifice of the altar. <clears throat> so, um, the, this little process, there's some things that I think uh, can be found in 1 Peter that might also run along the lines of this. This is 1 Peter chapter 1. And 
And we're just going to look at verse 2 and 3. First Peter. And uh, in verse 2 and 3, we're going to see the Trinity at work. Um, the Holy Spirit didn't come to testify of himself, to speak of himself. He came to declare Jesus. You look into the Father's face and you actually discover the Jesus that he loves. You look into Jesus' heart and you see. So there's this inworking between themselves, but there's also this working that these scriptures describe in relationship to us. Um, let's see. Let's look at verse 2 first. Elect. According to, okay, so this is, this is being elect or chosen or, or um, particularly picked, which really is external things. According to, number one, the foreknowledge of God the Father. God the Father. Okay, so we have the Father at work in our situation whether we're aware of it or not and we can say if Jesus said when you pray pray our father then you could say we have our father at work in these situations and I think it's it's important that that we begin to transition to um, recognizing the father in that in his capacity whether we recognize the capacity at this stage or not, that we realize, I mean, this is elect according to the foreknowledge of God, and this is not the end of it. And uh, verse 3 will also show us that it's the Father, just like all the other verses, uh, not just in, in from written from Peter, but from written from Paul. Blessed, for example, Ephesians, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, not Jesus, but the Father who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in that Son. Always, if it's going to name the Father, it's going to speak of his Son. It's going to be about his Son. It's going to be about his Son. It's not first and foremost about us, except the benefit that we get from that. Okay, so uh, foreknowledge of God the Father. Uh, next, in that same verse, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience. Okay, so uh, this is the work of the Spirit. This is, you know, justification is a work that Jesus did on the cross. Sanctification is a work of the Spirit, in my opinion, is a work of the Spirit, revealing the Christ in whom we are and who is in us, so that we are sanctified from our carnal view of ourselves and all of the things that we Christianity makes about us, you know, instead of about him. And then uh, the rest of that verse goes on, and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. So here are the things, uh, and as it were, that blood was sprinkled on us to cover our sins. And then finally, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Okay, so this is something toward you, but is not something that you are. Can you see that? It's the same as what we were talking about earlier. It's, it's like it would be equivalent to the ring and the shoes and the whatever other thing. was. Yeah, robe. All right. So verse 3, though, begins to talk about put in. Those, that verse, verse 2, talked about put on, take to yourselves. Verse 3, blessed be the God and Father. See that? You see? And Jesus is not going to want to be before the Father. And the Father is going to want to bless Jesus. And he is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his, talking about the Father, his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Christ from among the dead. From the dead. All right. 
So this is a, this is strictly a work of the Father, and it's related to death and resurrection. Therefore, it's related to his son, but it is described as a hope, a hope. It's described in the King James as a lively hope. The actual translation of that would be a living hope, a living hope. Our hope beyond what we put on that God has given us is what we put on, which is exactly what the prodigal son did when they got the, the offering, the sacrifice. And the father said, okay, now you're seeing, it's almost as if the father, while he's standing there, the ring, the, the robe, the, the, the shoes, it's almost as if the father says, now you're seeing in my face something that you never saw. You never noticed the son in my face. You may, may have never even noticed my face. You just called me father and that was it. But you're seeing something and it's moving you and it's making you realize that there's something more at work here. Come with me now. I want to show it to you. Take it to the altar. Slay the thing. Take him through the process. And then say, this is where I dwell. This is who I am. This is my nature. And you have my son in you. This is who he is. This is who you are. So it's not just, oh, the Father loves me. See, you know, come on. I mean, I, we can settle on that real easy. Oh, the Father loves me. Christ is in me. And he sees the Son and everything's good. So it doesn't matter what I do because he sees the Son. Well, no, he still sees you, prodigal. You know what I mean? He still sees you if you're there. But there's, a, there's a, a major thing that happened in that sacrifice. The prodigal died and he did not rise out of his own death. Okay. Through, from the dead, by the resurrection of Jesus. Okay. So, um, let me just hit a few things here. The begetting is already done. He's a prodigal. He's in the family. He's already begat. Uh, blessed be the God which hath, according to his abundant mercy, hath begotten us by his mercy but not by his son. Okay. We are definitely in the family. Glory to God. Don't have to worry about that. You don't have to freak out. You just need to know that, yes, there's something beyond you that the Father wants, and that shouldn't freak you out. It should cause you to press into his heart. It should cause you to press into his heart. <clears throat> and unto a living hope, that's your begotten, who hath begotten us unto, there's something more than the begetting, unto a living, a living hope. Not, um, not, um, I'm, not something that's not living, like you're in condemnation and I'll give you something that'll take away your condemnation. Or you're going through something and I'll give you something that, that's not living, that's intervention. <laughs> it's a big difference, you know. But, and you'll probably go back to the way you were when the next thing comes along. Well, you will because the living son is the only thing that's going to change that, that course. There's nothing else going to change that. Um, so I put living hope, not religion or Christianity, because neither one of those lives. They don't, Christianity does not live. You say, oh yeah, it's active. And, well, it's not alive. <laughs> it may be spreading, but it's not alive. Jesus is our life. <laughs> He's alive. Um, and then from the dead. By the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. And again, there's never, ever, ever any reason to talk about the resurrection unless it comes out of a death. The resurrection is a result, not a power in itself. You say, well, it says in Philippians, I want to know him in the power of his resurrection. The power, first of all, it's not in resurrection power. It doesn't say I want to know him in resurrection power. 
doesn't say that. It says in the power of his resurrection. And the power of his resurrection was the depth of his death. Can I get amen? R and O me was is fine again. You know, with all those fuzz here, I need about ten napkins nowadays. <clears throat> um, introducing the, the caretaker. And her new sweater. <laughs> All right. Um, from the dead, this is where you must come from. I want, I want to be resurrected. You need to come from the dead. You need to come out of death. You need to come. You need to see... The father didn't take the son over and put him at a table and say, you know, it's a smorgasbord. Eat whatever you want. Live in resurrection. He took him to an altar. He took him to a place where the fatted calf was going to die. The sacrifice was going to be given, which is Christ himself who gives himself. And if you know anything about sacrifices and stuff just for example one one example is the sweet savor offering has nothing to do with sin it it's many times mentioned to be a bullock which is what a fatted calf a fatted calf it's not a cow it's a calf and a bullock is not a cow it's a calf okay um but if, it's, if you're coming from death, guess what? There's only one person who ever came from death. And if we start trying to live outside of that, then we're still in death, but it's a death out of which there's no resurrection. His is the only death out of which is resurrection, and we're either joined in him, we're either joined in the son, or we're on our own. How many of you want to stand before God totally on your own? Okay, well... Me neither. So, um, and he, th therefore, if, if, if you think about it then, he's not just resurrected, he is our resurrection. Make sense? Did you hold up a thing? Three, okay. From now on, I'm starting to lose it now. You're going to have to start shaking it or something. Yeah, no, no, that's precious minutes in time. Okay, um, geez, we may have to go to another class since you all came here. I was thinking about stopping and just giving you one and blessing you, but it seems like the Spirit of God may want to bless you. Just closing with this, that I, this is just me and you don't have to, you know, I'm not holding myself up in any way other than just saying, for me, I, I really never think about the resurrection in terms of me being resurrected at all, ever. I haven't for years and years and years. Jesus is my resurrection. According to Ephesians, I've already been raised and seated in heavenly places. And he's the resurrection now in me. And the life. And, you know, you say, well, you know, don't you want to go in the last days? You know, I don't, you know, you know what that means. I don't even know what that means. I just want to be with Jesus. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't, you know, whatever that means, you, you, you figured out but I know what him being the resurrection in me means I know what that means and as the resurrection that means that's the promise of some sort of future resurrection if need be because I'm one with the resurrection himself okay well let's take a break and 
and we will come back.